and I can't wait to get to the shop and buy a Cornetto. Hang on a sec, did I? Did I set the alarm? Yeah, I'll be fine. So with traditional security systems, you have to remember to punch in the code, hit arm, and then off you go. But what if you forget and you're on your way to buy a delicious Cornetto and then on the way, you suddenly remember, oh, maybe I didn't set the alarm. You shouldn't have to worry about that. With a smart home, we're gonna look at how you can use contact sensors and motion sensors, tie it all into Home Assistant and have that do that for you auto-magically so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Okay, so this is what we're aiming for. We have this Alamo card in the top left corner. Uh, when you arm it, it typically gives you a grace period so that you can go out of the door, come back in, do whatever you're doing um, without the uh, without actually triggering the alarm. So I'm just gonna disarm this quickly. And I hit disarm. Uh, you can also skip the exit delay. So I'm gonna do that and just immediately arm it as a way. You can see the lights turned off. That's because we have an automation set where as the alarm gets set, it turns all of the lights off in the house. Kind of makes sense because the idea is that we're not going to be there. So I'm just going to disarm and then we're going to get into exactly how we make this work. The other part to this, of course, is we want to make sure that when we leave the house, we are going to arm the security system. So I've got this automation. It's going to arm the cameras when we're away. The first thing it's going to do is it's just going to check that when I leave the home zone or when my wife leaves the home zone, uh, that neither of us are still in the house. And the reason we want this is because we don't want for one of us to leave and for the other one to still be in the house and for the alarm system to automatically arm itself. So it's gonna check for both, both conditions um, and you can check this quite easily just by adding a not condition and then adding all of the conditions inside if you want them as multiple. And then we're going to arm the home base, which is a UFI home base. We've got some UFI cameras around the house. Um, it's going to arm that to away. And we're also going to call the service for Alarmo. It provides this arm service. And we're going to put in the entity ID, which is Alarmo, because that's what Home Assistant has given it as an entity ID. And we're going to pass in the code. If you have a pin code that you're using to disarm an arm, the alarm system, then you're going to want, want to put that in there. And then you're going to get a mode, and we'll get into this in a minute. Um, we, I have a custom away mode and a night mode set up. I'll, I'll explain in detail what those two do. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that you force this alarm on. You don't want to have it not activating for any reason. Um, and then you can go ahead and hit save. Um, and this should pop up in your list of automations, and it should be triggered. Uh, when either of these conditions occur. So first things first, uh, I need to go over to Hacks. If you haven't got Hacks already installed, uh, you can just head over to hacks.xyz and it has really straightforward instructions on what you need to get up and running. Click on download. It will also give you very straightforward instructions on how you can install it into a Home Assistant instance as well. So once you've got Hacks up and running, you're going to go to Integrations and just search for Alamo. Click through to Alamo and it will take you effectively to the GitHub page with all of the details on it. Um, I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed on the bottom right, you'll see a download button. It's as easy as just clicking the download button and then restarting Home Assistant. Um, so you can see the, ha the Alamo integration itself uh, is really frequently updated. We take a look over at the releases. Uh, you can see three weeks ago there was a release, uh, 11th of April there was a release we're on the 27th of May now, so like a month and a half ago. Um, sort of a month before that, a couple of months before that. So they're, they're coming up with Alamo releases really, really often, uh, which is really great, stays nice and up to date. Um, the other thing that I've got installed specifically, so this card isn't the default Home Assistant Alarm card, uh, this is one I've specifically installed myself. So if we go back into hacks, uh, this time we're going to have a look at uh, Lovelace integrations on the front end. Um, we're just going to search for Alamo. Uh, you can do the same here. 
select the Alamo card and then again in the bottom right hand corner you'll have a download button um, and this gives you the slightly richer alarm card that you can use. Okay, so now we've got Alamo installed. It should appear on this side panel. We've got these three modes. We've got armed away, armed at home and armed at night. They, uh, they serve different purposes. So if we're arming it away, then we have this exit delay of 60 seconds. The reason for that is if we're going outside and maybe we're loading up the car and then we're coming back in, we're going to be dropping on and off the Wi-Fi which is what's used to infer that we're at home or away. And we don't want the alarm to keep on arming itself and then disarming itself quickly. So we've got this grace period where it can jump between the two states. The entry delay is used so that if we come in through the door, there's a little bit of a grace period before the alarm actually gets triggered. Uh, that's useful, say, if we have someone who's popping in to feed the fish or something like that, then it's not going to immediately trigger as soon as they come in through the door. They'll be able to get in through the door and punch in the code on the dashboard in the hallway. And the trigger time is set to 30 minutes simply because if it starts going, we don't want it turning itself off for 30 minutes or so. The home mode has no sensors active. So when the alarm is armed as home, uh, nothing's going to trigger the alarm. No sensors are going to make the alarm become active. But at night, this is slightly different. We want a exit delay of no, no time at all. The, the reason for this is because it's an automation that will trigger the night mode. Uh, we have it set at a particular time at night, it will automatically invoke itself. The entry delay is also set to none. If we're upstairs sleeping and someone comes into the house, so they trigger the door sensor on the front door, or the door sensor on the back door, or the motion sensor in the conservatory, we want to know about it instantly. We don't want we don't want them in our house for 20 seconds before the alarm tells us. So the night mode is definitely something that's very different. And again, if we're at home and it's triggered for the night mode, then we want to make sure that we have this infinite trigger time as well. Like we don't want it turning itself off. We want to be the ones that are going to turn it off. So we now have Alamo installed. We have the Alamo card. We have the mode set up. We're going to go and take a look at the sensors. Uh, you can set up as many sensors as you want. I have these four sensors. So if there's motion in the conservatory, the garage door is opened, the front door is opened, or the utility door is opened, it's going to trigger the alarm as long as the mode that it's in is one of these modes that's selected. If I go into here, you can see I've got the away mode, the home mode, and the night mode. So I'm just going to turn on uh, home mode, click save. You can see now it's set up for these three modes to trigger from this. So I'm going to go and undo that. If I wanted to add a new sensor, say for example, I wanted to add the roof sensor in case someone's going to break in through the roof, quite unlikely, but why not? Um, we're going to add that to the alarm. You'll see it will pop up as a new sensor here. And uh, we can do the same. We can just say, I only want this to, to be used during the night mode. Um, quite an important detail. Uh, you might see that there's different types of sensor here. Sometimes it will show up as a tamper sensor. If it's a door sensor, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure it's set as a door sensor. Otherwise, it's not going to work as expected. Uh, let's just go ahead and get rid of that. OK, so now these sensors are set up, we're going to have a look at the actions. And in the actions, you can see there's a few things going on here. When the Alarm is armed. I have some specific things that I want to do. As I mentioned earlier, I've got a UFI home base. So uh, there's a plugin for it, which I, I will cover in another video that will let me interact with the home base. And all it's doing here is it's saying, when the alarm is triggered, I'm going to also trigger the alarm on the home base. And I'm also going to trigger the alarm on the camera in the back garden. And I'm going to trigger the alarm for the camera in the front garden as well. And those, if you haven't heard them, the home base alarms and the camera alarms on the UV cameras are very good, they're very loud. You're definitely gonna know that an alarm has been triggered. Back into actions, same with disarm. Uh, this will be if the alarm has been triggered and we're punching in the code to disarm it because it's, it's going off at the moment and simoning. It's gonna do the same kind of thing, just in reverse. Uh, it's gonna reset the alarm for the home base, the back garden, and the front garden. Nice and easy. 
We also want to make sure that we send notifications to us as well. And I'm going to get into a couple more details a little bit later on in the video, how you can use Tasker to use an alert on your phone, even if you have it in do not disturb mode, it's going to use the alarm channel. So I'm just going to get an alert on my Pixel 6. Yeah, I know, probably do an update. And the title is going to be alarm and it's just going to say this is the alarm that was triggered and this was the specific sensor that caused the alarm to trigger. So I know if someone's come in through the garage or through the utility room or through the front door. Okay, we're going to head on over to Tasker. All I need to do is create a new task. I'm going to select event and do auto notification, which is a Tasker plugin you can install from the Play Store. I'm going to choose auto notification intercept and it's very handy if you go to the configuration I've got this nice option to fill from a current notification so i'm going to select that i'm going to choose notification this is the notification that i've just had sent home assistant alarm which we configured earlier and i'm just going to select done for that and done again okay so that's the event and now we have to choose a specific task to execute this is one that I've created earlier. You can just create a new one. And if I select the alarm task, you can see I've got this intercept behavior for the notification and it's gonna trigger this alarm, which is just gonna play this alarm fast, high pitch sound. It's not very pleasant to listen to, but I guess that's kind of what you want. It's gonna get your attention. Specifically, it's playing this on the alarm stream. There's different streams that you can choose. So you can choose the media stream or the ringer stream. But note, if you've got your phone on do not disturb mode or you've muted things, uh, typically the alarm channel is the one you want. This this is the channel that's gonna be used for if you set an alarm to wake up, uh, you're gonna make sure that you wanna, wanna be able to hear it. It's that same channel. So you should always be able to hear the alarm. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I've got a ton of automations and I plan on making a ton more content. So if you want to stay up to date with that, please like and subscribe. Ciao.